Black Power, this past week was another long, exhausting, and ugly week. But I do got to give a major salute to the right excellent president, Robert G. Mugabe of Zimbabwe. Once again, he took to the world stage yesterday and told everybody to go to hell. Even though he has um, many people in his nation now rising up against him, he once again represented a true example of a revolutionary, strong, black African leader. And, um, you know, we give thanks for all the work he has done on all of our behalf, um, whether it's in Zimbabwe, the continent of Africa, or those of us around the world. You know, right now, he is um, going through a process of impeachment by many of his own who he helped to liberate, who he helped to build up. And where I agree with many of you in Zimbabwe who have been communicating to me, I do not know everything that's been happening over there. But as someone who has studied the colonization of Africa, the neo-colonization of Africa, the coups against true um, African leadership, the, under, the undermining of Africa, um, I do see the patterns once again of outside sponsorship um, using pundits within the nation to mislead and, and to create chaos and confusion. So our hopes for everyone is that, um, you know, a, a new generation of true revolutionaries rise up and do what is needed in this situation. You know, one, um, allowing the great Baba Mugabe to live out his days there in Zimbabwe unharmed but to also continue to move forward, move the nation forward um, independently uh, with their sovereignty and not allow these outside interests to, you know, sabotage you all, um, put you under neo-colonization, um, you know, rob and rape you of your resources, again, taking over your land. So these are all things that quite often when true leadership is taken down, you know, the rest of the, the nation is left to compromise for. But right here in L.A., um, as far as these economic sanctions we have been dealing with, we are continuing to move forward. We do have 10 locations under sanction right now. Six of those are Korean-American merchants. We were told yesterday that the new ownership at Hubert's, the Korean-Americans, met with other Korean-American merchants in that area in Africatown. Um, this included the the owners of flare cleaners i believe it was a nail shop and a few others in the area they also have been speaking with other negro pundits but again basically how they can remove us the africa town coalition and bring a stop to our action no real um no real effort on on how they can help the community that they are are exploiting and building their empires off of so you know we are seeing how that's going to play out today the next few days next week or so because we do intend to be at hubert's for at least a couple more weeks if not longer until we can meet with representatives from the um korean american community we were supposed to have this meeting last friday but it was pushed back and at this point we don't know if that was a stall tactic to see if we will get it uh, exhausted over these next couple weeks if more people will stop holding the line as as people have been going back because of the lower prices or if this is a stall tactic hoping that uh more of these pathetic ass negroes will bait in for that two thousand dollar bounty and uh, create a situation to where you know the the line won't be there anymore um and and just as far as these negroes uh you know, that's one of the most exhausting things. Um, the folks that, you know, we fight for. Um, same people that benefit off of our work. You know, be the same ones to sabotage their own shit. I mean, now cats are talking about they getting cheap liquor, cheaper liquor and, and cheaper blunts. And they ain't never in, in the whole time of living that community see the changes that was made. But yet they want to now go against those of us who helped to make these changes but even more so yesterday um a sister was attacked on Dagnan in front of Aki Bamboo 
and the sister was stabbed a couple times. And this happened in front of those same sorry ass clowns who now um, want us to shut down. Same clowns who've been tiptoeing in and out that store, breaking the line. But that's why a lot of the bullshit that exists in our community exists. Cause niggas too fucking stupid, too fucking weak to do what needs to get done and then will even go out their way to try to challenge those of us who are working in our collective best interest. You know, we've been saying between Liquorland and um, Hubers, you know, we can't find not one Korean to go against their own, even though what they're doing to us is wrong. We can't find one Arab, one Jew to stand with us against their own, but yet they can continuously find a bunch of sorry, pathetic ass idiots and that's why ultimately we we are treated as a second or third class people because we don't think first class we don't fight first class we don't act first class but um you know we gonna hold the line as strong and as long as we can but we do need more y'all to come forward you know, people, I guess, thought we were kind of clowning, saying we need a thousand brothers to come forward. But right now, out of 400,000 black people that's left in L.A., you know what I'm saying, having a thousand brothers come forward, I mean, percentage-wise, look, look how low that shit is. And we can't even get a thousand. You know, we salute the 30 or so that came over this past week, different times and days, um, people saying we need to be at the store for longer hours, we need to be at multiple locations, and all of this we do know, but we can only do what we can do with the man and woman power we got. You know, this past week we learned of two more situations. One sister was, um, she went to a store down on Crenshaw 29th, again to support the business, but after she was overcharged, she brought it to the clerk's attention and it resulted in her getting spit in the face. Another one of our sisters, um, Candace, our comrade, she went to a store on Central and 85th. You know, she did business there and then she tried to use a lighter and um, it resulted in her getting pepper sprayed. You can go look at, at the video from last night, day 78, and hear her story, but that's what we telling folks. It's not something that we've sat down, mapped out, and said, okay, we're going to launch these assaults against Koreans and, and liquor store owners or whatever. But it's shit that is being done to us, done in front of us. So something that we're obviously being told has to be corrected. And again, with all the genocide that's happening, with all of the um, manufactured um, domestic terrorism that's happening, with all the gentrification that's happening, y'all, we got to engage in some type of resistance. You know, we're showing you across the board, um, law enforcement is not on our side. From, from shooting our people down in these streets to what's happening at these stores. Um, Candace was sharing when the police came last week after she was pepper sprayed, they refused to even look at the videotape. And we've repeatedly shown y'all at these stores, um, Liquorland, the sheriffs didn't want to look at it until the people in the store were accusing us of something over here at Hubert's uh, for the longest. The LAPD wouldn't look at it unless the store was accusing us of something. Then finally they started reviewing the tapes and saw a lot of bullshit. So, you know, that's the whole reason Faison's been locked up damn near 11 years. After some employees at Weenusness was called a brother a nigga, white sheriff came and decided to lock us up, fabricated a report, and when we went to court, videotape was nowhere which again would have proved his innocence. So we got to build our own governing body, y'all. We got to build our own security forces, but the handful of us cannot do this alone. We appreciate all the support those of you who have been giving us have been giving us, but we need more of you who are just, you know, monitoring this stuff, you know, liking this stuff, making little comments to get off your ass and come forward. This Thursday, we will have another black family dinner, a black family feast. We do not um, acknowledge Thanksgiving, but traditionally it's something our people have um, done. So we want to make sure our brothers and sisters who are sleeping on the streets, who don't have families, can come and, and eat a good meal with the rest of their family, their, their extended family. Um, last year was a success. 
we appreciate all the support we've been getting we are taking um donations once again um we do not accept cooked or prepared food from people we do not know but if you have other items that are not still or spoiled we will accept those we are also collecting blankets um first aid kits hygiene products tarps and other things that people sleeping on the streets will need um last night it got super cold and again even some of the brothers um and sisters y'all see with us you know in these actions they don't have homes um you know most of us are semi homeless so you know it's not something where you know people talking about we need to put our money together and buy this damn store i mean we putting together what we can to do the little bit that we are doing so hopefully sooner than later some investors will come forward and, and start um you know securing some of these spaces but right now we are in survival mode and i hear people talking about you can't be talking about survival you gotta be talking about thriving but to thrive in a capitalistic society you have, have to comply and conform to different extents to the game that's being played and ultimately that game is exploiting your own people so people that's really talking about thriving in this type of society without first changing the conditions don't trust them motherfuckers because no matter how much game how convincing they talking whatever they talking at the end of the day they conforming and they in cahoots and making deals with them other peoples and they not giving a fuck about you all right um but we do need y'all continued support to do the work that is being done and to um advance and even make the work that's being done more effective next monday i am due back in court um you know dealing with the case i have uh, november 27th at this point i will have to move forward with this public defender that was assigned to me and at this point you know can't really trust this dude because last time he was saying he did, we couldn't make a motion to dismiss the case because of some bullshit but now that i was given information you know how the law actually applies now he sees oh yeah you know we can do that and you know i'm not just here trying to get a deal which damn near all court appointed attorneys are trying to do but you know because of the amount you know black attorneys are, are charged and asking to deal with this case you know four thousand dollars is something i don't have right now even if i did have it is more it's other shit that's that that is needed for rather than just lining the pockets of a black capitalist so you know that's just one of the other angles that um we are dealing with you know black professionals who fall into the illusion of inclusion rather than making the commitment to help their people using their talents and energies to serve and help their people you know the individualism the egos the vanity y'all is all part of the same pathetic shit just like the niggas who sat out there and watched a sister get stabbed up you know attorneys charging four thousand to some broke ass people they just as pathetic as them niggas you know um across the board but they wait till they affect and then want to hoop and holler and then they realize okay our power is in numbers you know not their individual talents not their individual um um checking account or whatever but yeah hopefully more of us will wake up sooner than later because right now we are fighting campaigns that potentially um affect all of us that target all of us and you know our success is in the numbers of us that rise up black power